So, do we all remember those bags that we just had to have? Especially if social media was to be believed. But come to think of it, I've never seen them in the wild. Let's talk. Hello, 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 and the warmest of welcome to today's video. For those of you who haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Nick, fab to have you here. Those who have seen my face before, thank you so much for joining me again. I hope you enjoyed my video. Videos, videos. I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you enjoy my videos. I put out uh, videos roughly three times a week on a range of different topics, anywhere from fashion to like more personal topics. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then please do head down, hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell. I love chatting with you all. I'm all about living life loud and what that means to me is being your authentic self, being proud to be you and just celebrating who you are. Celebrating yourself and of course celebrating others. So, just thought I'd quickly share a few things with you as is my habit at the start of these videos now because I'm just trying to interweave stuff and keep it fun. I thought I'd just share with you a few different things. So, bag of the day. Louis Vuitton, Noé, Epi Leather, Toledo Blue, MCM Pom Pom, love. If anyone knows, where I can get potentially another one of these, that would be amazing to know. Ideally, a Louis Vuitton one if I can, um, just because this one's starting to look a little bit, a little bit ratty and I would quite like to replace it because otherwise the bag looks great. So I just want to give this a bit of longevity. So if anyone knows, let me know. But this is my Louis Vuitton Noé. I really enjoy this and this just felt like the perfect outfit because I am wearing my new Devil's Advocate suit. For those of you who saw me recently show this on social media, I put it on my Instagram when I first unboxed it, or first unboxed it, first unpackaged it. Um, I had to show you instantly and I had to wear it pretty much as soon as. This is from Devil's Advocate. I absolutely love it. Scalloped collar suit in this beautiful pattern. Makes me feel like I'm in Mykonos or somewhere like that. Fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. I bought another piece from Devil's Advocate, but I'm planning to wear that when I go into London on Friday, so I'm not going to show you that just yet. You'll see that in the video. What else have I bought? As part of that, I bought some, bought these trainers. Now, I love these new look trainers. As you know, I love a Kurt Geiger Wicked, but I love a knitted trainer. These are super comfy. These are new look, super comfy. Love them. Wore, the, wore my old pair into the ground. Um, binned them when I got home from Latvia was really sad about it because I couldn't find them again. Then they popped up on ASOS, so I bought two pairs because I thought, you're, you're not getting away from me again and I need to have replacements. So I have, okay? We know I love a multiple, I do this a lot. But when you find something that works for you, why risk find, buying something else? Do you know what I mean? What else have I bought? New mitt, new tanning mitt. My one has a hole in it, which means that it doesn't look very good. So new mitt, I'm excited. My favourite chewy sweets, these zingers, oh, I, singers, stingers, love these, love putting them in the freezer so then they like snap, but they're tutti fruity flavour, they're amazing, so I bought a 60 pack of those, so I can have one of those kind of every evening, and then also I tried the freeze dried sweets, didn't I, it didn't really work out for me, um, so instead I just went back to a classic kilogram of jelly mix, I will level with you. I've been home about five minutes and these were on my doorstep when I got home. They're already open. I've probably already eaten about 50 grams of them. No shame in my game. They are really, really good. Mmm. Let's have a little one now. Mmm. Bubblegum bottles. Delish. Delish. Very happy with that. So, what are we here to talk about? We are here to talk about the bags that were so hyped. Everyone had to have them. We talked about them non-stop, or people talked about them non-stop. I don't know why I'm saying we. Um, people talked about them non-stop. Then they vanished. Where did they go? They were going to be the next it thing. Where did they go? Did they ever really exist? I only ever really saw them on the, you know, on the influ influencers wearing them. Like, it makes you question. <laughs> like, they clearly didn't take off. They disappeared very quickly, but they were going to be the next big thing. Let's talk about what they were, okay? Let's talk about what they were. And this was inspired by a 
comment that Connor made on Instagram, I think it was on an Instagram story, where he kind of said, do you remember a specific brand? You know, where did they go? And I, I commented on it going, absolutely, absolutely. And I've referenced it, the comment before, but this very much inspired my thought of, you know, can you believe everything that you see on social? Can you, even if it's from a big brand and you're buying into it, is your money kind of secure in that? Is it going to disappear? Are brands guilty of discontinuing? I think some are much more guilty of this than others. Um, are some guilty of hyping things up for it to only become a bit of a dud? Again, I think some are, I think some are um, kind of more guilty of that than others. But let's just talk around some that were super duper hyped but also they've disappeared. And in all honesty, I've never really seen them in the wild. So let's kick this off with the brand that Connor was referring to, and therefore the brand that I actually think was most guilty of this, Senrev. Where did Senrev go? Who still has a Senrev bag? Is anyone still showing Senrev bags? Has anyone seen someone use a Senrev bag? I know a number of individuals with beautiful collections. I spend a lot of time in London, Manchester, places where designer goods are fairly prevalent. I am never seeing a Senrev piece. I don't even know if I've seen one in the flesh. In all honesty, in a department store, on a person, I only ever saw them when they were clearly gifted um, on the YouTubes or on Instagram. Like it was that maestro bag that could be worn four or five different ways that everyone said was the best thing since sliced bread. But as soon as it came to swiping their own credit card to buy one, crickets. You know, I know the odd person did buy one or a variation of, I remember seeing a few individuals do that. But on the whole, people were hyping these up and I'm pretty sure it was a PR thing. I'm pretty sure it was. Does anyone know someone who has one? Do you, any of you have one? Do you love it? What's your thoughts on it? For me, I see this very much as a brand that was hyped to the max. But like I said, as soon as it came to, as soon as there was something else that came along, the influencers dropped it. People weren't buying it or, and demonstrating it. You know, I'm sure they're still going. So they obviously have a customer base. But in terms of showcasing those products, it they just seem to vanish. Where did they go? Next up, a brand that I think has some real hits, but some real misses. This I think was one of their misses. The Pont Neuf bag from Louis Vuitton. This was a really interesting one because I actually think aesthetically the bag is okay. It's not exceptional. It kind of to me looks like the love child of a Capucines and a Pachette Matisse, um, which, you know, I don't like the Pachette Matisse as a bag, but I do love the Capucines. So amalgamating the two, you're not gonna create something that's awful, um, but I actually think they created something that from a functionality perspective was probably fairly similar to the Pachette Matisse. It was that kind of satchel style, slight shoulder, but kind of slightly more satchel style, um, had a casual nature to it, although the materials that came in were a bit more formal, the logos, etc., a little bit more formal, but I just don't know which market it was appealing to. To me, it felt a confused product. It didn't seem to land anywhere. And again, it was going to be the next big bag from Louis Vuitton. And as quickly as it came, it fell off, it fell off the influencer circuit. It fell off the promotion circuit. Now, the bag is still available. You can still buy it from Louis Vuitton. It's circa 3K. If you want it in Crocodile, it's gonna cost you 20 odd grand. So you make your call as to whether or not you think it's worth it. But this was one that I remember people saying was going to be super hot. Now, I have no doubt it's well made. I have no doubt the materials are beautiful. I have no doubt the craftsmanship is great. I have no doubt it's practical. Is it anything exceptional? No. Do I think it was too close potentially to other pieces that they had within their collection that were already a huge success? Yes. I just don't think it had a place, to be honest. And like I said, it might be selling really well, like away from kind of social media and it's just not appearing in the realm of, of YouTube and Instagram, etc. But I remember it being super hot and then super not. So let me know. 
let me know what your thoughts are. And actually, do let me know what your thoughts are in terms of the social media piece. Do you see it as a barometer of style? Do you see it as a barometer of what's worth having? I'll be very honest with you. I don't see a lot of the pieces I own on social media, but I love them. So it doesn't matter to me so much. Um, but it's just that thought of, can you believe when someone says, this is going to be super hot and everyone's going to want it and everyone's going to have to have it. I think some people buy into it and then it, and then of course it disappears as soon as it came. So it's just a really funny balance. But where that can really benefit you is on the pre-love market. You can pick yourself up a sweet deal with those bags that have somewhat dropped off because the appeal of them is down. The, they don't benefit from scarcity in the same way. It's kind of more... It's less about scarcity, it's more about a lack of a market. So actually that can be a really positive thing on the on the pre-loved. But a bag that I actually think is very similar to the Pont Neuf bag, um, that comes from another brand that I think is guilty of the kind of introduction discontinuance cycle, Dior, and this is the Dior Bobby. Again, I just don't know the place for it, um, in all honesty. It doesn't fit, in, to my view, with the broader Dior collection. It, it feels like it would be bulky on the frame. I don't know if the shape being somewhat of a semicircle would be all that practical, in all honesty. You, especially where a lot of things in the world are squared. You've got rectangles and squares are a lot of the things that we use in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, but, you've then got this bag that's got a circular nature to it um, at the bottom. Is that going to be massively practical? I don't know that it is. Um, so then you end up having to have a much larger size of it, which can then be a little bit bulky on the frame, could be quite heavy. I don't love the branding on this particular one. I actually don't love it aesthetically. But again, this was one that if you were to believe the world of socials, was going to be super duper hot and the wave did it kind of rode the wave for a very short space of time but even then it didn't seem to really take off i don't think i saw a few individuals saying it was the best thing since sliced bread but they were fewer and further between than some of the other items on this list but you just don't see them i don't know anyone who owns a bobby bag i've no, i don't think i've seen one in the flash I think I might have seen one at a Dior store. Not that I'm hanging out at Dior all that often, but I think I might have seen one at a Dior store in the window, possibly. But I certainly don't see them day in, day out. And I much sooner see, I know a lot of individuals, um, kind of online and offline, who own things like the Pachette Matisse, etc. I don't, I don't really know anyone who owns this. Or, yeah, no one's, certainly no one's talking about it. <laughs> if they do own it. No one's talking about it. So it's always really interesting to me in terms of a, in terms of a thought, thought process. Now, another one from Louis Vuitton that I think just was a little bit of a dud, in all honesty. It's still available. I think it had potential. I just don't know that the application of it was that successful. Um, was the wave bag. I don't think it was critically acclaimed. There was a lot... You had this, you very much had two camps. You had individuals who loved it and were really pushing it. Then you had other individuals who were quite critical of the aesthetic of it, didn't quite understand how it fitted within the broader range. And I actually don't massively dislike it. I prefer it to the Pont Neuf, as an example. I prefer it to the Pachette Matisse. I think they were trying to do something quite interesting. I like the fact that in a lot of instances you had the multicolour with the kind of Vuitton. So there were some interesting variations of the wave, but the wave broke. <laughs> Let's just say that. The wave broke and with it went the hype for this bag. It came and it went. And it's an interesting piece. You can get a nice little deal on the pre-loved market. I think you might still be able to buy the odd piece from Louis Vuitton directly, but it certainly, it certainly vanished. It certainly came and went fairly sharpish, but it very much had two pools of individuals where you did have this very kind of passionate following of the bag who were really passionate about pushing it, talking about it, sharing it. You know, I'm saying they were likely gifted it. There will have been 
some of those individuals will have bought it, fair enough. Um, but you also had a lot of individuals who didn't quite understand where it fit and why it was conceived ultimately. So I just, you end up with this balance. I find it, I find it interesting in terms of what's going to be so hot and what's going to be next and what's being pushed. But yeah. Now one that I know wasn't so much a social media bag, but it seemed to really be it and then seem to vanish very quickly as well. And this can happen with, with bags. Of course, trend has so much to play in that. You know, you have a lot of individuals who will say things like the Celine luggage are now very outdated. I disagree entirely. I actually think that's a really sophisticated piece and I think it stood the test of time brilliantly. Um, but you will have individuals who will say, no, it was hot in 2012, it's done. Fair enough, everyone's entitled to an opinion. One that just seemed to be so, so popular and then everyone seemed to be scrambling to sell was the Chloe Nile. Now, this for me also is fairly impractical. Um, I aesthetically never loved this bag. I didn't find it cute. I didn't think it would be brilliant for daytime, nor do I think it was really appropriate for evening. I never really understood the aesthetic of the bag, in all honesty. It didn't come out in patterns, prints that I found particularly interesting or intriguing. I'm not really a Chloe fan anyway. It's a brand that is quite prim and proper. And whilst I like formality, um, I wouldn't say my style is very proper. Um, so it's always quite, it's always a brand that I'll sparingly look at and think, oh, what's going on over there? I think the only bag that I would consider would be a woody tote, um, but even then, it would just be, it's not one that I would pay for, but hey, if they were to gift me one, I would happily accept it, um, but it's not one that I would go and, you know, swipe my own card for, but this just seemed to be a bag that was really, really hot, and everyone was loving and using and promoting and showing, and it seemed to feature in, I certainly remember about three or four years ago, well, maybe maybe a little bit before, maybe sort of 2017, 2018, it was in every YouTuber's collection. Then all of a sudden, the tide seemed to turn and it was a, you know, a race to sell these bags, a race to move them on. The bag I preferred that seemed to not get such popularity was the Chloe Faye. I actually thought aesthetically it was more interesting, but that just didn't seem to be as popular. Um, but this seemed to seem to really pop off and then vanish very quickly. Now you are not seeing anyone show this bag. Now you're not seeing anyone talk about it. It's more of a, oh, do you remember when that was a bag that we all loved? Yeah, all right, moving on. You know, it was, it's kind of one of those things, you know, or bags I regret buying. It features in those quite often and often because it's um, lost the individual a significant amount of money. Um, and quite often they'll say, I barely used it and I've lost a lot on it. I mean, I could have told you that. But there are some pieces that I think were more interesting at the time. Like I said, I thought the Chloe Faye was a more interesting piece. But I don't think many agree with me on that. Let me know what your thoughts are. I don't think many do. But this seemed to be hot, then very quickly not. And then last, but by no means least, this is one that aesthetically just keeps me up at night. Because I just don't get it. And for the price point, I get it even less the Dior Vibe collection, but most particularly the bowling bags. Who asked for them? Who asked for this? It does not look expensive. The mini, it, which is still available, 2,200 pounds. Not even the fluorescent pink could save these. They brought them out, was it fluorescent pink, fluorescent orange? Um, then you've got the black and white. I mean, those bright colors were really fun, but they couldn't save this bag. It's not chic. It's not fun. It's not, it just looks cheap. But like, but as is with the tone of this video, if social media was to be believed, this was going to be everything. And people were going to be clambering for these. Some of the sizes seem to vanish very quickly. Like I said, Dior are quite guilty of the, you know, introduction discontinuance cycle. Think about the, you know, Miss Dior, think about the Dior Addict, um, the Dior Reva, 
Diorama did okay, actually, um, but they discontinued that, which I think was a mistake. I think that was a good a good line. Although the Caro, I do like the Caro. I think that's a nice bag. And I'm, I'm actually surprised they kept that as long as they have, because that did, that has promise, but it didn't seem to capture people. But clearly it's doing well enough to have lasted the number of seasons it has. Anyway, I digress. This Dior Vibe zip bowling bag, like I said, F it was being talked about left and right, but... It wasn't, for me, one that I had a belief that people were genuinely running to Dior to pick up. I don't. I have a feeling that there was PR, and by all means, crack on with that. I have no issue with it. Absolutely zilch. I think if you can get those sponsorships, you get to try products, you get to promote products, fair enough, good for you, more power to you. But just as a consumer of both content and product, I didn't buy into it. I didn't buy into any of these. Um, some because I just wasn't that interested. Some, even if I was, I wouldn't have the price point. I'm not spending £2,200 on bags on a regular basis, if ever. So, you know, there's obviously things here. But this was just one that, like I said, if... It was pitched as being the next big thing. I don't even think it was the next medium thing. It just didn't seem to take off. But you had certain individuals who were very passionate about it. <laughs> and you don't see it so much anymore. You certainly don't see it being carried. You don't see it being styled. You don't see it in a what's in my bag or a get ready with me like... You're not, I don't see it when I'm on the streets in London. I'm not seeing this. When I'm in Manchester, I don't see it. Like, you're just not seeing it. And I just always have this question mark in my mind of the motivation when people share stuff. And you know what? You could level the same thing at me. You could sit here and be thinking, but Nick, you show us things. I do. I do. And every penny that has gone into them was mine. And I'm genuinely using them. And if I'm not using them, you'll hear about it. And the likelihood is I'll be ticked off at myself because it means I've wasted money. So, yeah. So in terms of what I share, every bit of it is because I believe at the, at the time it's worth spending my money on. So, like I said, I have no issue with individuals taking sponsorships, with working with brands. I think it's great. And I think if it keeps people's channels going, I think that's a fantastic thing. But for me, there are just these certain products that I remember being so heavily pushed that come, a se come next season, you've then got someone else saying, and now this is the new hot thing. And now this is the new hot thing. Can't keep up. Can't keep up. And it just creates a churn, which I don't find that interesting. And, you know, it just, uh, like I said, I can't keep up. My style can't evolve to that extent. My bank balance certainly can't keep up. So you just kind of look and I'm like, oh, I wonder, I'll see what, that, what that's doing in six months. These on the list, some of them lasted longer than others. Like I said, Sembrev was a good year that that was, that that was the hype a couple of years later. Are people still using them? I don't know. Anyway, that was probably all a little bit waffly. A little bit, you know, whatever. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if there are items that I've missed that were, in your mind, super duper hot on the, you know, influencer circuit, on social media, that then just vanished or that you've never seen in the wild. There are certain bags that have, like, their popularity is reduced. Take the multi pressure accessoire. That was like so, so popular, slightly less so now. However, it was popular for a long, long time and you still see a fair amount of those. It still appears in people's collections. They still do well on the resale market. Like that, that is just the nature of certain items will lose a certain amount of popularity. You can expect the popularity to depreciate. That's not a problem. Some of them just kind of seem to go from, you know, 60 to naught very, very quickly. Um, of which I believe these to be some of them. Let me know what you think. Love to hear from you as always. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care everyone. Bye now.